Hello, good afternoon, friends of the Jose Mon Garage channel. Today, I'm going to make a very simple video on how to install a remote controlled battery disconnector, that is, by pressing a button we disconnect the car battery. What applications does this have? Well, for example, look, in my case, my battery consumption is such that if I leave the car all night with the battery connected, the next day it barely has any battery left and, until I fix it, which needs to be fixed, every day I disconnect the battery, close the hood, and break the hood cable because I haven't had time to fix it yet, and it's a hassle, so it works as a circuit breaker, it works as an anti-theft device, although of course it would cancel the alarm, it has a lot of applications. The thing is that it's a little device that you can buy on Amazon for 20 euros. I'll leave a link in the video description to buy it. For 20 euros, you can use a remote control to disconnect the battery. You don't have to open the hood or have any buttons inside the car or anything. You put the remote control between your car keys and there you have a circuit breaker or a battery disconnector, okay? The device itself is nothing more than a relay, okay? Well, okay, let's see the connections. This relay costs 30 euros. So, we can use the relay to disconnect the positive or negative. I prefer to disconnect the negative, okay? So, we're going to do this diagram by disconnecting the negative. How does it work? Look, this relay has four terminals. I'm going to show you which four terminals it has. It has two control terminals, which are this one here and this one here. They have a negative cable and a positive cable. That's what connects the relay, that is, it has to be powered. We have terminal 8.6 which is positive, positive power supply and 85 which is negative power supply. Since we are going to disconnect it in negative, you are going to take it directly to this terminal which is going to be the negative terminal. 30 is where we are going to install this gadget with this little screw here and this little screw here. This comes, everything that I am showing you comes in the package, okay? in the box with the relay. So, in my case, in all cases, 30 is where we are going to put this terminal of the battery, whether we are going to take it to positive or negative. Okay, if we were to do it the other way around to positive, the connections here would be different. The negative has to go to negative and the positive to positive. In this case, the negative to the negative and the positive, which is this cable here, which is going to be terminal, I will have to connect it here to the positive of the battery, okay? The negative goes from the battery connected in this way. And this terminal, which I am going to disconnect, is the negative of the battery. I remove the original negative battery cable and connect this one, okay? And then the other end, which is the 87. The 87 I either pull a thick cable and take it to the negative of the battery, or as I did, with this same thing in this little screw of the negative of the battery. Now I am going to isolate it. Okay, that is, the other side goes to the negative of the battery, in such a way that when the switch is connected, it makes the current pass through here and we have already closed the circuit of the negative and when it is disconnected we open the negative circuit and cut the power of the car. It's that simple. So, that's it, that's how the connections are, there's nothing more. I'm going to insulate this a little bit with insulating tape, I'll put it in place and we'll see. Okay, negative of the control cable to negative, okay? and the positive that I don't put to positive, perfect, well, there you have it, it's in place. The insulator is already insulated and now we're going to place it there in the negative. Well, as you can see, it's in place without any major problems. We've tightened it with the 13 mm wrench and now we have to put this positive here in this positive and that's it. Let's see if it's true and if this doesn't trip and I don't charge the car, I've already secured the battery well, I've already put the positive here. So we have positive and to activate the contactor. Actually, it's more of a contactor than a relay. It's a contactor that with a positive or negative signal trips the contactor and makes the current pass from one end to the other or does not pass the current from one end to the other. So I think the correct technical term would be contactor. 
Okay, well, let's put, as I said, it costs around 30 euros on Amazon, depending on the supplier and such, but around 30 euros, they leave you a link in the description of the video to buy it and now let's see if it works or not. It is supposed to be disconnected, no matter how much I turn the key, it should not have power and connected, great. Let's see now how it is, if it is now connected or disconnected. Let's see, here we have the remote control that comes with the ignition, car keys and I have no power. Okay, I press the Y there I have power. See? I already have power. And now I press it and the car starts perfectly. Fantastic. If I remove it while I do nothing. This has power. Okay, but if I now press the off button, the power goes out. Okay, we can also see it with these lights. If I press the on button, I have battery. I start. I have light. I have battery. I disconnect it and if I turn it off, screw it. The power is already cut off. Well, it's that simple. It works very well. What happens? Of course, if you have a radio with a code, then every time you do this you have to give the code to the radio again and you have to reset the time in the car and most likely it will turn on. Let's see, we're going to turn it on for a second. You're sold on this skidding, traction control and power steering, at least in the Group B cars, but you know that that's like when you change the battery, 100 minutes after starting the car it turns off. Okay. It takes the code, it takes the parameters and it turns off, that's it, okay? And also about tire pressure. Well, as you know, if the tire pressure is correct and it doesn't turn off, look for the little button where you have the tire pressure set and press it for 3 seconds and it will turn off. Is it a perfect solution? Well, yes, it's very good depending on the application you want to give it. The application I've given it is this, but basically it's to be able to give power to or remove power with a remote control, okay. Any application on a motorcycle, on a motorcycle it has much more utility because so many things don't have to be reconfigured. It would be a perfect current meter. Come on, great, I think it's a great invention. Well, that's it. I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, bye, friends. If you liked the video and found this content interesting, please give me a like. Bye, friends. Bye, bye.